Perhaps I can forget my boredom for a while. development began on Darkstalkers, the team at Capcom planned to have two female characters in the roster. Keeping with the game's focus on having a roster of playable monsters, one was planned to be a Catwoman while the other a female vampire. Originally, the Catwoman was designed to be the sexy female character for the game, while the female vampire would be designed more as the cute one. But since the roster already had a male vampire, it was suggested by producer Alex Jimenez to change the female one into a succubus instead. Unlike the vampire who traditionally consume the blood of their victims for sustenance, the succubi are traditionally female demons that consume the life force of others as a source of energy, mainly through sexual activity resulting in the deterioration of their victims. The succubus was designed in folklore to be stimulating to the male counterpart from both a physical and mental level, like an ideal symbol for seduction and temptation. As the female vampire was making the transition to the succubus, her design took on a tone that emphasized the sexiness normally inherent to the succubus. As a result, the Catwoman's design was altered to fulfill the role of the cute character in the roster. According to Akira Yasuda, the succubus was designed to be very masculine at first, similar to the manga character Devilman, but her final design was perhaps more influenced by the comic book character Vampirella. When a particular design came in from someone on the objects team, he knew they'd hit the mark. She would have the appearance of a beautiful young woman with sea green hair wearing a sleeveless black bustier like top with white feathers and a small heart cut out of the midriff. Her origins as a female vampire could still be seen in the bats patterned in her purple nylons next to her black boots and the bat-like wings protruding from her back and the sides of her head. Those wings on her back aren't just for decoration, however, as they can also detach and transform into a flurry of bats that aid her in battle by forming weapons like blades, spikes, and drills to a fully operational jetpack or handheld laser cannon. She could also create a physical mirror image of herself and had a human form where she appeared wingless and with blonde hair. She was given the name Morgan based on the crow goddess of Celtic mythology, which roughly translates to Phantom Queen. While her first name is of Irish origin, Morgan canonically originates from Scotland, based on her last name Ainsland, which, while not an existing surname in any Gaelic language, is possibly an alternate spelling by Capcom of a traditional Scottish name like Ainsley. Morgan's character is designed to be sexy and confident, conceited but playful, while her being a succubus would normally be considered dangerous, and to some extent she still is. Morgan is not considered really evil compared to the other Darkstalkers. She is strangely friendly to others and approachable, despite her beauty and sexiness. Perhaps a result of spending most of her time in the material world, enjoying hedonistic delights. Morgan was born in 1678 as one of the few remaining succubus in the demon world Makai due to her species drastically decreasing population. She was raised by the Dark Lord Belial Ainsland, the most powerful being in this demon world who has quite the notoriety in the Darkstalkers universe. His strength is said to surpass all logical understanding, and in the hierarchy of Darkstalkers, Belial is the only character ranked as an s class demon, which is measured as being greater than 100,000 D-class demons. He has mainly existed behind the scenes and has never actually appeared in the games outside of a couple pieces of promotional artwork and graphic novels where he is heavily obscured. Belial has been reported to have four arms and four eyes, with two of those eyes placed on the palms of his hands, and stand over 200 meters tall. His ancestry in the Ainsland noble family spans back to the original ruler of Makai, Zururu Ainsland, but during his reign, Belial has never claimed a Makai for himself or taken full control because he always considered himself and the demon world as being one and the same. Belial foresaw the future of Makai as being fraught with destruction unless a powerful life form is there to maintain the balance. Unfortunately, it would come at a time where he would no longer be alive to protect Makai, so he decides to place the future of the demon world and the Ainsland family in the hands of his daughter Morrigan. Morrigan was a very special succubus, even among all of the Darkstalkers. She was born as an S-class noble at a time where a power struggle had already begun among the noble families of Makai. 
when she was first discovered by Belial, Morrigan possessed an enormous power within her that Belial believed she had no way of controlling at such a young age. If left alone and her power unrestrained, Morrigan may not only destroy the land around her, but herself as well. So Belial decided it would be safer for Morgan to only attain her full power when he believes she is ready. Unbeknownst to her, Belial splits her soul into three. One third would remain with him until his death, while another third was stored in a pocket dimension. For the next 300 years, Morgan grew up in the Ainsland Castle, where she was tended to by Belial's servants Lucian and Mudo. Life in the castle was boring to her, so she would frequently run away to visit the human world looking for fun, ignoring her duties as the future ruler of Makai. Unlike the traditional succubi, Morgan is slightly different ecologically. Succubi in the Ainsland family create a special secretion liquid in their body when they are either physically or mentally stimulated, which is then used to maintain their life. So if she were to be trapped inside a small secluded area like her castle, Morgan would supposedly die from the lack of stimulus. It's during her travels to the human world where Morgan encounters Dmitri Maximov, a vampire noble who sees her as his rival because she is to succeed Belial. <laughs> One night, she is drawn to a strange power permeating from the human world, which turns out to be Pyron, the final boss in the first two games. <laughs> when she returns to the Makai, Morgan learns that Belial has died, possibly with the energy he had retained from her, and she is to be the next successor to the throne of the Ainsland family. Even with her new title as ruler of Makai, she chooses to avoid her duties, continuing her life like before because she doesn't want to give up her playful and carefree days. By now, the energy separated from Morgan 300 years ago has become a soul of its own, and watched Morgan's life in Makai. During the events of the third game, Vampire Savior, the demon lord Jetta takes notice of this energy and creates a transient form in the shape of a young succubus named Lilith. Yaru! When Jetta creates a new dimension called the Majigan, Morrigan and her castle are pulled into his creation resulting in the showdown at the end of Vampire Savior. <laughs> Morrigan senses Lilith during one of her escapades and realizes her origins. Their fusion results in Morrigan becoming more powerful, but still retaining the same personality and outlook on life that she had before. Morrigan's desire to always explore the human world has allowed the designers at Capcom to easily insert her into a number of other video games. One of her first appearances outside of Darkstalkers was in the crossover fighting game Marvel vs. Capcom, where she can be seen fusing together with Lilith before a match. Her cameos didn't stop there, as she was playable in a number of other video games ranging from fighters to puzzle games to RPGs. Morgan's been featured in so many of Capcom's fighting games that it's become a long-running joke among fans how her same sprite animations from Darkstalkers are always being utilized. In Marvel vs. Capcom, it wasn't as noticeable, but by Capcom vs. SNK, the recycled sprite was starting to show its age. <laughs> it wasn't until Tatsunoko vs. Capcom introduced her 3D model and ended this tradition. Morrigan was originally voiced by Yayoi Jinguji throughout the series in various crossovers. <laughs> but she's since been replaced by Riei Tanaka, a rather famous anime voice actor. <laughs> in the American animated series, she was given a Scottish accent, an idea that was revisited as recently as Marvel vs. Capcom 3. You need to strip off those prosaic morals. Show me your true form. Let it out. Since the beginning, Haruo Murata saw her place in Darkstalkers as occupying the same position Chun-Li did in Street Fighter 2, with Morgan being more adult by comparison. According to Akira Yasuda, when Street Fighter 2 was at the height of its success, everyone at Capcom was pretty much in agreement that creating a character to surpass Chun-Li's popularity would be difficult at best. At least that was the case until Morrigan came along. While Darkstalkers was never as popular as Street Fighter, Morgan's developed quite a following on the internet, gaining a fanbase that rivals many other female characters originating from Capcom or otherwise. 
Even her costume has become just as iconic, as it has been featured in a number of different video games and anime over the years. Morrigan has become the most well-known Darkstalkers character, and made more appearances outside of her original games than any other character in the franchise. At this point, her fanbase arguably contains more people than the fanbase of the actual Darkstalkers games. It's a little hard to believe how much one character can manage to outgrow the series from which she came from like Morrigan has. Whenever there's an opportunity for Capcom's characters to come together in some kind of crossover, there's no doubt this succubus will be showing up in some form or another. Perhaps she can best be explained as one of those times the artists at Capcom really nailed down the type of character they were going for. Put simply, Morgan is a character with an alluring personality and a body designed to exhibit her features as much as possible. She has remained a mainstay at Capcom for so long because at the end of the day, she is still the best personification of a succubus, a creature designed to be attractive to her desired prey, which in this case, would be her legions of loyal fans. <laughs>